If we hadn't been using genetics to improve our production results, would have put the business under extreme pressure to even exist. Our family's been at Warrington 120 years, this branch of the family for 40, and we, we had some, some pretty bitter lessons early in the, in the piece when we, uh, when we first came here. It was a heck of a drought in the early 80s, lost half our breeders, and became evident that we had to do things differently with regard to breed selection and, and getting performance from our breeders. We became focused on selecting for fertility, preg testing, removing substandard breeders on fertility from the herd, and buying bulls to improve the genetic ability of our cows to reproduce regularly. 410, condition score three. Yeah, so this one's pregnant. She's about 10 and a half weeks pregnant. Genetics, absolutely plays an important part in the profitability moving forward. If the three big drivers of profitability is greater weaning percentages, less breeder mortalities and higher selling weights, then this selection process ticks every one of those boxes. When you actually get to, to go and, and select the bulls, um, I, I certainly try to, to lean towards, if, if they've got good maternal data, so it's temperament, Scrotal circumference and days to calving is, is really all we go on. And for example, the, the last 20 odd bulls that arrived here had an average days to calving of minus 13.5. When we get the bulls home here, um, we have them semen tested and morphology tested. A bull that has greater than 70% morphology has a greater chance of producing a heifer that is superior in the fertility trait. Um, we've got bulls here, their mothers have had um, 10 and 11 calves in succession. Uh, so that's, that's really important to get that reliability. There's a whole lot of breeder management practices that go on here. It was a process of eliminating the, the subfertile animals. Our two-year-old heifers that are joined, uh, every non-pregnant heifer leaves the place. We've taken our breeder herd from a, from a 50 odd percent weaning rate to a consistent 75, 76% over the last 14 years. And that has included some extremely tough environmental years and uh, reduced our breeder mortalities from 5% to 0.5%. We've shortened our joining period just by removing the bulls, basically, taking them out of the herd and preg test uh, the animals back to that four month calving period. Our last calf is at the end of December. I think that the real key to getting it short is the absolute control over the heifer group. Each generation of heifers through to pregnant with their second calf, that is a really easy process. It means we can run a whole lot less breeders, putting a whole lot less pressure on the country to get the same number of calves or, or more calves. For sometimes seven, eight months of the year, our protein levels in the feed here are at or below maintenance levels for, for a breeder. We time our breeding according to the green date, if you like, which is the first week in January, uh, so they can then take full advantage of the summer flush. Because we get such harsh winters in this, in this area, we have to have our last calf weaned by about the third week in April to allow those cows to to get back into score three plus at calving. So that requires a supplementation program to compensate for that. It all ties in with, with your pasture production and your cattle production. Whilst we haven't selected for growth in, in any way, because of the indirect relationship between fertility and adaptation, the slaughter weight of our cull cows has been slowly sneaking up for 15 years without selecting for growth. The 
record keeping is so very important because if you don't know where you're at and don't measure where you're at, then you have got no idea of where you want to go. Uh, you can't do it without uh, uh, measuring the performance within a 12 month period. I just encourage everybody to go about things with a completely open mind and start to look at things objectively instead of subjectively and embrace the change that's coming because uh, genetic selection and improvement is picking up pace and I would hate to see the northern industry left in the dust.